I want to tell you a story. My great aunt Melissa and my great uncle Pete used to be ballet dancers. But my great aunt Melissa was diagnosed with MS when she was in her 20s and has been living with the condition for over 40 years, with my great uncle being her full-time carer for the last 15 of those years. Multiple sclerosis, MS, is a long-lasting disease that can affect your brain, spinal cord and the optic nerves in your eyes. It is incurable and also makes you a lot more vulnerable to illnesses and infections. On Mother's Day last year, Melissa was admitted to the ICU at the Royal Free Hospital, having been diagnosed with a very nasty case of pneumonia. Every day, at midday, on the dot, my great uncle would turn up when visiting hours began. If there was a nurse he hadn't met before, he would show them a photo of her dancing, taken in 1976, three months before she retired and six months before she was officially diagnosed with MS. What my great aunt Melissa has endured over the past 40 years must be too painful to comprehend, but throughout it all she has received wonderful care from the NHS and their staff. Article 25 of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights states that everyone has the right to a standard of living adequate for their self and family, including food, clothing, housing and medical care. However, due to the current political climate, the NHS is facing multi-billion pound cuts. Four out of five ICUs must send patients away due to the chronic bed and staff shortages. In 2016-17 alone, Jeremy Hunt, the British Foreign Secretary, has removed £1.2 billion from the NHS, a fifth of the capital budget. Why have we voted politicians into power that are preventing ill people from getting the adequate health care that they need? And why are we doing nothing about it when it is clearly jeopardising our human rights? I don't know. Do you?